So what you'll see tomorrow is our first exhibition called Modify, which is really around the way that we perceive the world. So we wanted to play with this idea about perception. Um, and so we invited an artist called Sutu Eats Flies, um, whose real name is Stuart Campbell. Um, he's from Western Australia. And he curated a, an exhibition called Prosthetic Reality, which is a series of about 50 works. I think there's 49 different artists involved, sound artists, animators, illustrators. Um, and each of these works, um, if you download an app and, and point the app at the works on the wall, they come alive with, with animation and sound. Um, and so the picture that Sally's holding up there through the iPad, you can see it on the wall as the still robot, but when she's looked at it, what comes to life is this woman who's fallen in love with this robot. And you get a, a glimpse of a narrative. It moves, it has sound, it's interactive. And Sutu was here on a couple of weekends ago giving a masterclass. I think there were a few teachers that attended that um, on how to do this yourself so you could bring your own artwork. So this, this I've found to be really interesting because, um, first of all, I thought that by the time we got to mid-2018 with Apple having released developer kits last year that augmented reality would be everywhere. But unless you've played Pokemon Go, not many people have played with augmented reality. And then we sort of talk about how this technology might be used in healthcare if you're going out for a remote visit or how it might be used in maintenance and logistics. Or, um, and there's this, there's this kind of window of I, I never, you know, this, this, this looks interesting. And people who are familiar with kind of VR, they've often played VR on PlayStations, but, but this, this ability to get that whole world view in at once is a little bit different. Um, so it's been really effective. Um, and the style of the art is street art style. So it's not particularly, you know, it is aimed at our target audience. We've got about 30 works upstairs and the works that are a little bit more not safe for small eyes are, are upstairs. In our street gallery, here's where the seats are. So that's a, that's a picture from one of our events. You can see there's three sound chairs and each of those sound chairs is a work by Sasha Gerbic, who's a local sound artist with, that give a sense of place. Um, and then the lights you can see are by Skunk Control at Victoria University. I really love this space because often there aren't many people in it and it's a really quiet, reflective space. It's really, really different to the Universal Gallery. Um, we had one person come in three times in the first week and he said, next time I'm coming in when it rains, so I can sit in one of those sound chairs and just watch the rain while I listen to the oldest tree in South Australia. And I thought, that's fantastic. Um, they're very popular with teenagers on Friday nights. We're open till eight. You can fit five teenagers in one of them, but mostly they're just used for kissing. <laughs> I'm okay with that too. I mean, I just think this is, a, this is a really great space. I think it's one of the spaces where maybe we haven't been able to reveal the science as much, but there is more information online and there, there are layers to discover, but it does get people thinking about the physics of light. It does get people thinking about how to collect sound. Um, and there's lots to explore um, if you're so inclined. In our arcade, we've developed an exhibition that looks at, uh, looks at pain. And so we've been working with Laura Mosley and Tasha Stanton, who are researchers at UniSA, and their research broadly shows that about 90% of the chronic pain we experience is just our brain trained to accept, expect certain stimuli. And so we, we have created a series of um, installations which help people start to learn about this, this research. Um, we, you can hear from Lorimer and Tasha, they'll tell you stories of pain. You can see the VX1 that I've mentioned. We've got an app where you can draw your own experience of pain. And then we've got these chairs, um, which say, when you sit down, don't be shy. Um, and then we'll make you feel pain without hurting you too much while we play with experiments around you to see how that affects your perception of pain. So we give you a heat shock and we give you an electric shock. On the pain scale, I'm a five out of five and um, I think they're dreadful. Um, whereas when the workplace health and safety officer came in, he sat down and I, and no res blank face. And I was really concerned because I was like, if these aren't working for Trevor, we're never going to get them through. Like he's, you know, I'm like, Trevor, can you feel anything? Are they working? And he just said, yeah, feels good. <laughs> like it was a one. Um, and that's what our audience is experiencing. So although there are only two chairs, if we get a group of 15 people come in, there's, there's real sense of theatre in terms of how people are responding. And one person will rate it a four and stop, and the other person won't shift or won't move at all. Um, and we had a, a psychology student who was completely blown away. She'd done the subject on neuroscience. She'd done, she, she knew this in kind of theory. Um, she had a line of tattoos up her neck. And she just said to me, I've been telling everyone that getting a tattoo is just like a tickle. 
but some people won't feel it like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting a tattoo. I think it would be terribly painful. Um, she hadn't really realised that people experience pain in, in different ways until seeing that for herself. Um, and it really inspired her to go back and have a look at what she'd learnt in her class. Um, in our Gould Interactive Gallery, we're exploring the future of being human through the lens of the body. We have three works. Um, this baby has had uh, extra skin flaps attached to it surgically by its parents to allow it to cope with a hotter climate. It will cool down faster. You'll get to meet four other babies, and these are, these are the work of a UK artist called Aggie Haynes. Um, I watch people come in. Some people are quite revolted by them and don't look at them further. The way that we've set it up is so that you will find the babies first and then you'll find the information. So people are like, I don't understand, and then they'll go and read and set up a really interesting curiosity gap. Accidentally, it's just that the lighting wasn't good to put the information where we wanted to, and so we moved it. I'm always going to design things like that now, because you watch people go back and forth trying to work it out for themselves, and it's fantastic. I've seen people spend half an hour having debates with our moderators in the space about bioethics, genetic modification. Um, so they're really, really interesting work.